So as I was uh, it just interrupted, the, the seals are about to break in the scroll on Revelation 6, where you have the four horses come out of the first of the four, the six, there's seven seals. The first seal breaks open with the voice of thunder. Thunder is Mother Nature's sound of a massive explosion. It's like a huge kaboom. And that explosion is nuclear bombs are going to go off. What's coming is a Pearl Harbor style military attack. I've studied the scriptures. I know what's going to happen. I read it in 2 Peter 2, 6, where it says the Lord condemned Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes. And he made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. Now, I want to emphasize what's going to happen is going to happen to the ungodly. And Isaiah 3.10 says to tell the righteous it'll be well with them. They'll enjoy the fruit of their deeds. What I know is God is loving, kind, full of mercy and compassion. <clears throat> but the wickedness that we are witnessing that is rising up today has reached an intolerable level. God's mercy and compassion does run out. His wrath is coming on the ungodly. Just like the water washed away the wicked in the days of Noah, God provided for Noah and his family, and they were fine. They made it through, and they arrived into a new world. When they let the door of that ark down, they saw the blue skies, the birds were singing, uh, the grass was growing, it's a beautiful day. And the wicked were all gone. This is the world we're headed into. It says that in Second Peter chapter 3. Look it up. Look, it says to look forward to the coming day of the Lord. The elements melting in the fervent heat. It's nuclear. And you're told to look forward to that understanding. This is how God's going to fulfill his promise. Of bringing about the new heaven, the new earth, the home of the righteous. And so uh, the day is coming when we will be living in a society among all wonderful, good, solid citizens who are only around you to try to see what they can do to help you out. How can I serve you? What can we do? Throw all your keys away. There's no need to lock anything. The thieves are all gone. And so uh, God has a good plan. But I know this journey that we're on is going to include chapter 9 of Revelation where in chapter 9 of Revelation, John says that he saw a star falling from the sky to the earth. And it had a key and it, it opened the shaft. The opens the shaft to the bottomless pit. And this is up through the shaft rose smoke and fire of a gigantic furnace, which is a mushroom cloud that has an internal temperature of 10 million degrees. Read chapter 9. Read it in three or four different translations. Study it, analyze it, no question about it. The star that falls from the sky to the earth is a missile with a nuclear warhead. When it contacts the ground, the warhead detonates. The shaft that is released that opens up is the nuclear energy that forms the stem of the mushroom cloud. <clears throat> then it says the sun and the skies are darkened by the smoke. And then it says the agony the men suffer are like they've been stung by scorpions. In other words, there and it says they in those days men will seek death, but death will elude them. I go, can you imagine walking around with sores and boils all over you, suffering and saying, Oh man, I wish I could just die. This is not where I want to be. That is going to be happening, but it's not happening to you. <clears throat> this is happening to our enemies. Chapter nine goes on to mention. The number of the troops is 200 million. And then it says a third of mankind is killed by three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur. That's nuclear annihilation of 2 billion plus people. Chapter 9, Revelation. Study it. And I realized from a military channel where they were talking about how big a force Afghanistan had, and they said that we really don't know and then they, another military expert made the statement. We do know that no country's ever formed an army greater than 10% of its general population. That, and they said, well, the population of Afghanistan is, we know that number, and so the, their, their 
opposition forces they were contending with at the time couldn't be more than 10%. Informed with that information, I realized an army of 200 million that it says is going to form. <clears throat> That's about 2% of 2 billion. It is 10% of 2 billion. And then I began to understand we are going to see the one third of mankind that is going to be killed by fire, smoke, and sulfur are the enemies of freedom, democracy, Christianity. In fact, killed by fire is that they are the, the, the tares described in Matthew 13, where it says, when it's harvest time and harvest is at the end of the age, gather the tares in bundles to be burned. And it tells you clearly in Matthew 13, the tares represent the children of the devil. And here's the positive side of all this. The one-third of mankind that is killed means that two-thirds of mankind are wheat. Wheat is what is being harvested, and the wheat represents the children of God's kingdom. So then I realized chapter 8. Chapter 8 of Revelation says, The first angel sounds his trumpet, and a third of the earth is burned up. A third of the trees are burned up. The second angel sounds his trumpet. A third of the sea or the oceans turns to blood. A third of the creatures in the sea die. It goes on to say a third of the sky, a third of the ships are destroyed. It mentions a third of this, a third of that, a third, a third, a third, a third. I got them outlined. It's like 17 times a third is of something's being uh, suffering. I realized <clears throat> this is one third of the Earth's environment is going to be suffering the effects of the nuclear annihilation of all of our enemies. In other words, the Bible's true. This is what's going to happen. We are on this destination to arrive at a wonderful place, which is like we're going to be on vacation. We're going to go to heaven. Heaven said, we don't go there. Heaven's coming here. Jesus arrives with his armies from heaven in Revelation 19, 11. And the kings of the earth and their armies are destroyed, thrown in the lake of fire. It's all talking about nuclear. In fact, Revelation 15, if you look it up, you could replay this video several times. Revelation 15 describes John, says, I stood by what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire. And standing beside the sea of glass are those who have been victorious over the beast. And it says uh, they've been given white robes and they have harps and they're singing, they're singing a victory song called the Song of Moses that says, uh, great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways. O King of the ages, who will not fear you? For your righteous judgments have been made manifest and all nations Will come and bow down before you. You see, this is the destination that we're all on. We're on a trip, and the trip involves what's called the birth pains, and the birth pains are going to result in producing an amazing new life is coming to planet Earth. A new age is coming where never again will men train for war. Nations will not rise up against nations. So just like I made the analogy where you're going on a vacation, you got to pack your supplies. If you're going to the beach, you pack your swimming suit and so forth. You're going to the Yosemite. You're going to camp out. You take your camping gear. Well, here's the journey we're going on. We're going on a destination to a new age. A new world's coming. World peace is coming. But the path that we're taking this has a name called the war path. And I heard military experts say this. They said every time there's a war, the same thing always happens. The side that always loses are the ones whose supplies are cut off. I go, you know what? The smartest thing you can be doing right now is stockpiling your supplies because uh, we don't want to lose, do we? And uh, the day is coming when supplies are going to be hard to get. It's being mentioned in uh, Isaiah 3. The Lord will cut off all support and all supplies on a single day. It's mentioned in Isaiah 33 where it says, Brave men cry in the streets. The highways are deserted. There's no travelers on the road. I go, no travelers on the road is like an EMP where all the computerized vehicles are 
are uh, rendered inoperable. And so, yes, stocking up on your supplies is absolutely essential for the journey that we are on. And so uh, share this information. Understand we will arrive at our destination of the kingdom of heaven on this earth. And this is not for the lighthearted. It says this calls for the patient endurance of the saints. And so uh, thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe. Uh, God bless you and carry on. Like the song says, carry on, wayward son. Don't you cry no more. So there'll be peace when you're done. Well, hey, we're not done yet, are we? Okay, God bless you.